So you see these incidents online where a person is walking on the street and they don't see a bunch of cars that are coming and a truck, this huge truck is about to collide into them and then suddenly it's as if an arm just pulls that truck away and it goes in a completely different direction or someone who misses four cars and they collide and that person just stands there and they're okay. Or uh, in some situations you see someone that is involved in a freak accident and you know the guy that's jogging on the beach and then suddenly a plane hits him while he's jogging on the beach or something along those lines and it's like you witness divine decree in precision you witness that qadr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that perfect qadr of allah and then relate that to your own self you know sometimes you're on the highway and you're driving and you're supposed to be in a car accident you know, you're doing something that distracts you and then in that moment of distraction, something horrible is about to happen and then you see what happens around you and you say, SubhanAllah, Allah protected me. Those that have seen their children, you know, fall and if they would have fallen just a little bit differently, right? Then it would have hit the back of their head or this would have happened or that would have happened and it would have been catastrophic. All of these things that we witness in our lives obviously speak to the overwhelming power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they have something to do with the angels as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتُ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ That every single person has a guardian angel in front of them and behind them that protect them from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that concept uh, requires a lot of reflection. Number one, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we're always so paranoid about the devils, the devils, the shayateen, they're everywhere, the jinn, the jinn. Every single human being has only one shaitan assigned to them and four angels assigned to them. Now, everything else that, that, that's invited into your life of angels or devils is invited as a result of your good deeds or your bad deeds. But every single person has, proportionally speaking, four angels that are with them and only one devil, two angels that protect you and two angels that record on you. Okay, so the two angels that record and the two angels that guard you. But only one shaitan that whispers and tempts. But of course, environments and deeds invite more angels or more shayateen. But what do those guardian angels do and uh, what role do they play in our lives? Number one, they're always with you. They're with you during the day. They're with you when you sleep at night. They are with you for the most significant and insignificant moments of qadr, moments of divine decree in your life. Mujahid rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that those angels protect you from any wild animal, from any uh, riding animal, from any beast, from any person who wants to harm you. Even a namal fi udhunik, an ant that would be in your ear, if the decree is not upon you to be harmed, those angels will shoo away those bugs, they will push away those objects that are coming your way and protect you. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, when he was told that there was a tribe, the tribe of Murad, and they were planning to attack him, he said that they cannot harm me with anything unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed it, for Allah has set up guardian angels for each person. And the only time that a person is harmed is when those angels are told to stand down, when they move out of the way. And that's what Ibn Abbas عنه, he said that out of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those angels will protect you and they will be there for you and they will only move out of the way when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees otherwise. And this is a powerful concept on an individual level because you think about the story of the Prophet وسلم, and Jibreel alayhi salam protecting him from his enemies or the Muslims in the battle of Badr and the angels being sent in hundreds to protect them to where the Muslims could even see that their enemies were being thrown off of their horses and the sound of a whip crackling on someone and they don't see the whip and they don't see who's actually, uh, you know, who's actually doing it, but they were just seeing these things happen in front of them. Or the Prophet like, so I'm talking about the end of times where Dajjal would try to enter into Medina, but he would find angels at its gate that are protecting it from all directions. In our own individual lives, if you think about that, what Ibn Abbas anhu mentions, that you have these angels that are in front of you and behind you. And the only time, the only time that they step aside is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees that harm is coming to you. And that harm is what was decreed in the womb, also written by an angel, that your date of death, your lifespan, and that moment for you to go is now. And so those angels move aside when the decree of death comes your way 
only for your soul to be transferred to another group of angels with the shroud either of paradise or the shroud of hellfire.